Well, hey guys, welcome back. Um, I am so sorry it took me so long to start this renovation series. Um, long story short, I ended up getting sick about three weeks ago and ended up in the ER and they think I had Lyme disease. Um, but hopefully we got it early enough to where I won't really have any lasting effects from it. Um, and I'm finished with my antibiotics, so I feel a whole lot better. So diving right into this, um, I am starting by putting these upper cabinets back up. If you watch any of the demo series, you see I took them down so I could repair the water damage to this front wall. Um, but now that I'm ready to actually start renovating, I'm going to put them back up. And there is kind of a little bit of a trick to this that I found. So I really like to line these up with the holes that are already um, in the camper, the ones that they originally were mounted to. And so when I put it up there, I start by mounting it to the ceiling first. Um, that way I know it's in the right spot in the ceiling. And then I pretty much try to match up the screws on the inside after that. Um, so I'll do the ceiling and then I'll start with the right hand side wall after that. Um, and pretty much just make sure you try to hit as many of those original holes as you can. Um, obviously on the front, I won't have any holes there because I replaced the whole front part of that. Um, side note, if you notice, um, the top part there is actually a different color. When I ended my demo series, I, um, I had quarter inch paneling up there, but I didn't like how it didn't curve to that top part of the camper. So I ended up taking that off and switching the material to um, eighth inch paneling. So I highly suggest doing that to get that nice curvature so these cabinets would all actually fit in the right place. So next I'm putting this middle section back up um, and there is some wiring here. So what I'm doing is I'm feeding the wire from the wall through the framing of this middle piece. Um, and then you see I'm starting with the top part, um, just the same thing as the other ones. It screws directly into the ceiling and then I'll work my way to the back. Um, and these actually have a whole bunch of screws. They have screws in the sides, they have screws um, basically just screwing them all over the place. There's, there's a million of them. Um, now I will say I did not screw the back part of the two side pieces in yet because I wanted them to be able to be flexible just in case they needed to move in or out some to get this middle piece in. Um, but after I got the middle piece in, I'll go ahead and screw the other two side pieces in. Okay, so I don't need these lights anymore. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take these out. Uh, it's basically you take the little cap off. It's four screws and I have already clipped this wiring so they're, they're just gonna fall right out. Uh, after that, I will get the wiring that's hanging out and I will feed it through the framing of this. There is no bottom panel in any of these cabinets right now because um, the framing, how you screw them in is actually inside the cabinet. So I had to pop the top panel off in order to get to it. So I haven't put those back in yet, but it's on my to-do list. Next, just a couple of random things. I'm gonna get some foam and fill in any of the holes where the plumbing is. Um, this is in the bathroom. Uh, there's just some drain pipes and then that's the black tank flush right there coming up. Um, and then I'm gonna start on the floor. So this is a handheld uh, kind of belt sander and I'm basically smoothing these two edges from the old wood to the new wood. Um, I want it to be perfectly flush. Um, and so in order to do that, I'm going to basically smooth out this entire thing. I'm taking the screws out right there because um, it was grinding down on the screws and I didn't wanna ruin the belt that I already had. But that didn't matter because I ended up tearing this belt anyway and then I had to go get more belts um, which was fine because this is actually my neighbor's he was nice enough to let me borrow it um, but anyway I just kind of kept working at that until it was pretty smooth um, this will create a lot of dust so just watch out I could have hooked my shop back up to it but everything else is dirty anyway and I know I'm gonna have to clean it so I didn't even bother now there is a piece in the corner that isn't as smooth as I'd like. It kind of sunk in and I think that's just because I I didn't put the framing in the floor for so long. It kind of settled. Um, there is framing underneath it to support it, but I think the foam kind of squished together a little bit. So I am going to try to smooth this out as best as possible with some Bondo. Um, now this stuff isn't name brand Bondo. I think it's the Napa version Bondo, but it works just as good. Um, so I mix that up together and then any of these little cracks, I'm going to go ahead and fill. Um, normally this wouldn't matter, but um, I'm going to try to put sheet flooring in this. And so it will show through the sheet flooring if there's any light like cracks or any high spots or low spots. So to eliminate that, um, I 
pretty much just cover it in Bondo and try to smooth it out. Um, that one corner that you see, there's kind of a lot of buildup there. That was the corner that I was talking about that kind of dipped in. Um, so I'll let that dry and move on to removing these borders right here. So anytime you're gonna renovate an RV, you're gonna come in contact with these borders right here, and I would highly suggest removing them. Um, but the thing is, is, if you just pull them off the wall, it's going to leave a trail of adhesive on it. You don't want that because it's almost impossible to get the adhesive off the wall, um, unless you use like Goo Gone or something, and then you leave like a gooey residue. So my trick is, is you get a little heat gun, you put just a little bit of heat, just a few seconds, and you kind of just pick it up and peel it as you heat it and the whole thing will come off. It's super easy. It leaves no adhesive residue. So highly recommend doing this. Don't try to peel it off without any um, heat on it. So now that this Bondo has had about 24 hours to cure, I'm gonna go ahead and sand it down. Um, again, just using the belt sander to try to um, get it as smooth and as flush with the floor as possible. Um, and I mean, you, you probably don't have to do this, but I feel better about it just knowing that there's not gonna be any gaps or anything else like that. Um, so any gaps in the floor from where you've repaired any damage, you can fill it with Bondo. Um, it doesn't shrink like a lot of other materials do with you know heat and cold. Um, so it's just a really good thing to use for floors or any cracks or anything like that. Also, as another side note, definitely make sure to wear a mask. Um, I have my respirator on right there and wear your goggles because this stuff is nasty when it's in your lungs and you definitely don't want that. Um, so this did take a good bit of sanding, but I feel good with it. Um, so I'm going to move on to tackling this cabinet right here. So why am I taking out this perfectly good cabinet, you ask? Well, there's a perfectly good answer for that. And it's because I'm going to build an entertainment center right here. Um, so for those of you who have ever followed me for any other renovation I've done, I really like entertainment centers with TVs and fireplaces and the whole nine yards. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Um, but I need all of these cabinets out so I can rebuild all of this. Um, and of course, we'll have to move all this wiring too, but that's totally fine because I love wiring and I I love electricity, so it's not a big deal. Now all cabinets are pretty much made the same. This one is no exception. You see I took the side panel out right there, which exposes the framing and there's screws in those framing, uh, screws in the ceiling, screws in the walls, and then after that, the whole thing pretty much just comes out. Um, this had a radio in it before, so I'm gonna save all that wiring so I can rewire a new radio there. Now normally I would just take everything out, um, but this actually has the power center right there on the left hand side as you can see. Um, so I decided that I wanted to save that framing so I didn't have to um, re-put in this whole power station because that seemed like it was a lot. Um, so I'm taking this face frame off right here. That's pretty much all this is, is a face frame. And then I'm gonna take off any of these other paneling or framing around here. Um, obviously I don't have any electricity hooked up to this and it's not, uh, there's not a battery plugged in. So my 110 and my 12 volt stuff are not active. Uh, so if you're gonna do this, just make sure that all your power's off. Now, as you can see, I got the hot water heater right there too. Um, and this is actually the perfect location for me to put a fireplace above that um, because the heat is gonna go out. It doesn't stay underneath. It won't get into the electric, but it is close enough to where I can wire the um, fireplace to its own breaker, which is gonna be really nice. Um, I have some screws or some staples up here that I'm just grinding off because it would ruin the wood if I pulled it out and it seemed like a not a lot to just knock each staple out. So I'm just grinding it off at the top um, and they'll just stay in there forever and ever. Now there are some staples that have heads on it. I'll pull those out, um, but if it's, you know, a staple coming in the other direction where there's nothing to pull, I'll, I'll just grind it off. So next is the ceiling. I'm gonna go ahead and take off um, basically everything in the ceiling. So all of these vents, I'm gonna take the speakers, I'm gonna take the lights. Um, and I know it seems like I'm kind of bouncing around here, but there is a method to my madness. Um, basically what I'm prepping up to is to get this entire trailer primed. So in order for me to do that, I wanna do everything that creates dust before I prime it because I don't wanna have to 
prime it and then it get dust all over and have to clean it again. Um, and then I also need all of this off so I can prime the ceiling as well. Now I won't reuse any of this stuff. That's why I'm just throwing it on the ground. I don't reuse these lights because they are um, bulb lights and they get really hot. So if you have kids in your RV, highly suggest switching to LED lights because they don't get heat on them like uh, these ones do. I've actually had one of my kids burn their hand on these lights before. Um, so now I just replace all the lights with LEDs. Um, same thing with the speakers. I could keep them, but whatever. I mean, I need to know which is the positive and negative on the speakers anyway when I go to rewire my new um, radio. So yeah, it's fine. Now I'm just taking off everything that's on the walls here. You see all of this stuff, um, it's all gotta come off if I want to prime it and clean everything. Uh, so anything left that's on your walls or your windows like that need to come out. These shelves right here were in the bathroom. Um, I don't need these anymore because it used to be a corner shower and I'm converting it to a full shower. Um, so it's going to be a 40 inch shower versus like one of those really small corner ones. Um, same thing with the toilet paper holder. We do not need that. Everything can come off. I want to make the mess now. Um, and then I'll clean everything later. So anything that's messy right now, I'm going to go ahead and deal with it before I go ahead and clean it. Cause I don't want to have to clean these walls twice. That seems like a lot. Now this part right here, I didn't take this flooring up because it was underneath the kitchen cabinets and I had to take the kitchen cabinets out in order to repair the floor. Um, so I'm just taking all of that extra um, sheet vinyl off of the floor um, and you know, it's there's, there's no need for it. And if you see right there, there's kind of a little crack right there where I didn't fill it with Bondo and that's because it's going to be covered up by the framing of the kitchen anyway. So I didn't bother to waste the Bondo on it. So now that I've made a gigantic mess, I'm going to start cleaning up the gigantic mess in preparation for cleaning. Yay! Um, there's some stuff that I did save, like the vents to the ceiling. Um, that That's actually pretty much it. That That's all I saved because they just snap back on. So there's no need to replace those. Everything else I threw away. Um, and then I'll show you my little trick. This is a giant squeegee and I use this to clean my shop and it's literally the best thing. And it just gets all of like the dust and the big things at the same time. <laughs> it doesn't leave like, like a nasty residue like a broom does. Anyway, that's just my little hack. And then I just put it all in the trash can. Y'all know how to clean a camper. So this is pretty self-explanatory. Now, if you haven't guessed by now, I really like some bucket organization. So all of the things that I'm keeping from this camper, I am sticking in this bucket. Um, that way I don't lose the pieces and the screws and all that other stuff that I need. And then I can start vacuuming literally everything. You see, I'm paying special attention to where this wiring is right here because there was a lot of dust and um, <laughs> there's like a bird's nest in there. If you remember my demo series where a bird decided it was going to make a nest in that cabinet. And then I couldn't put the floors in the cabinet until the birds had flown away from the nest. So I was throwing away the extra residue. Um, so my whole point of vacuuming this entire thing is basically dust control. I want as much dust out of this camper as I can possibly get. Now, once I get past this point, I'm going to try to not make a mess in this camper um, and not get anything dusty, but you're going to want to vacuum every single thing. You notice I opened the fridge there and was like, nope, that's a project for another day because it was nasty. So vacuum the floors, vacuum the cabinets, um, vacuum the windows. You'd be surprised how many dead bugs you can find in the windows. Just vacuum it all. Try to get as much dust up as you can. Um, see, now I'm moving to the front here and you can actually see the difference of where I'm vacuuming the dust and where I have not vacuumed. Uh, so just try to get as much of this up as you can in preparation for cleaning these walls. I also took all of the screens out of the windows. Some have little handles you can just pull and the ones that don't have handles have little black tabs that you kind of squeeze and then the screens come off. Um, so after everything is off and the floor is vacuumed and the cabinets are vacuumed, I'm going to start cleaning. So now that we have all of that stuff vacuumed up, we can move on to the cleaning process. Now I'll just go ahead and warn you, this is a very tedious and time consuming process because there is a lot of surface area in a camper and you don't realize it until you have to wash every single bit of it. 
So in my bucket right here, I have a mixture of simple green and water. Um, I really, really like simple green. I've been using it for years. I use it for just about everything. Um, if you have something that's really dirty, you add more. If you have something that only needs a little bit of cleaning, you add less. Um, so I just really like it and it's super affordable. I buy it in like the three gallon jugs from Home Depot. So while you're cleaning, you will wipe down every single surface minus the floors, okay? So anything that's not new, obviously the front paneling right there, I won't wipe down um, just because it's wood. But everything else has this like wallpaper type stuff on it. So you want to wipe all of that down. Um, and then you want to wipe all of the windows, all of the cabinets, everything. Um, and this last step right here, I should have done it before I wiped it, but it doesn't matter. There was just a couple little holes that I just gently sanded and then um, filled the holes. Uh, I mean, y'all know how to fill holes. This is really like a non-sanding thing that pretty much goes on smooth, so there won't really be any dust for it afterwards. Now, while I was at it, I went ahead and filled the holes from the new paneling that I put in. Um... And that is pretty much it for day one on the renovation series. I hope y'all enjoyed the demo series. Um, you know, if there's something that y'all want to see or if you have questions about anything, y'all please let me know because I'm genuinely here to help you. Um, I feel like I've almost been through it all at this point and I'd love to give you any advice that you need. Y'all have a great day.